Energy is everywhere. It exists all around us and has an effect on nearly everything we do in today's day and age. Without it, billions of people around the planet would be left without the conveniences and necessities that they couldn't imagine living without. Anything you can name that makes your life easier, such as air conditioning, light bulbs, computers, cars, kitchen appliances, or cell phones, chances are it wouldn't be able to exist in today's world without energy. So what exactly is the issue? Why are we talking about this? Well, it's obvious that energy is an extremely influential part of our lives, and it's crucial for our nation to make smart decisions relating to the field of energy to ensure our well-being in the future, especially since world energy consumption is expected to increase by 50% by the year 2020. One huge debate in particular has raged across the country for years now, and that's whether or not, and to what extent, the United States should pursue renewable and non-renewable methods of harnessing energy. The incredibly split opinions and grave importance of the issue are why the energy crisis is the issue we want this year's candidates to discuss the most. First, let's take a look at what kind of energy we're used to, non-renewable. Common sources of non-renewable energy are coal, oil, natural gas, and anything else that cannot be replenished in a short amount of time. Those who argue against non-renewable energy typically claim that it is generally more harmful to the environment than its renewable counterparts, and this is true. So why are we still so reliant on non-renewable energy sources? First of all, non-renewable energy as a whole produces much more of the world's energy than renewable. Oil alone provides 41% of the world's total energy supply, with coal at 24% and natural gas at 22%. Across the U.S., fossil fuels produce 85% of our energy. Appalachian Power, a unit part of an electric unity called American Electric Power that serves 5.3 million customers across 11 states, produces most of their energy through the use of coal and natural gas. H. Joseph Jones, Appalachian Power's Director of External Affairs, had this to say about their customer base. Well, uh, the number of customers served by Appalachian Power in Virginia are about 524,638, and that's as of the end of uh, October. Overall, Appalachian Power serves three states, West Virginia, Virginia, and just a piece of Tennessee, and in those three states we have a little over a million customers. On top of that, it's easy to transport, cheap to transform from one form of energy to another, and its availability is not affected by unexpected climate conditions, unlike renewable sources like solar and wind. Despite all this, the various types of renewable energy are worthy competitors to fossil fuels. Use of renewable energy is exploding in the United States and comes in many different forms, including nuclear, hydroelectric, geothermal, and solar. Only 10% of consumed energy and 13% of generated energy in the United States is renewable, but it's rapidly growing and can have an immensely positive effect on the environment. If drastic measures were taken, greenhouse gas emissions could potentially be lowered by as much as 80% by the year 2050. In addition to its environmentally friendly nature, renewable energy also has stable prices, is generally very reliable in use, and creates lots of jobs. In 2013 alone, 830,000 jobs throughout the United States were devoted to renewable energy and resource efficiency. However, there are still several downsides to reliance on renewable sources. The main issues are that it takes up a lot of space, and for now is very expensive, although that could change. President Barack Obama has this to say about the costs of renewable energy. Every time we've made a decision, you know what, we're going to have clean air. The predictions were everything would fall apart. And lo and behold, turns out that American innovation makes getting clean air a lot less expensive than people expected, and it happens a lot faster than expected. Despite that, currently, while coal and natural gas tend to cost around 10 cents per kilowatt hour to produce, solar power can cost up to 24 cents. Additionally, to meet all U.S. energy needs with solar power, the solar panels required would take up over 18 million acres of space, or nearly 1% of the U.S.'s total area. And finally, there can still be major environmental risks that come with renewable energy use. For example, chemical treatment to cool steam plants can contaminate groundwater and the cleaning of solar facilities can increase runoff and erosion. 
While both renewable and non-renewable sources of the energy required to keep this planet running are highly appealing in their own ways, they are also detrimental in others, and lots of disagreement and debate has surfaced over what our policies on each will be. A clear plan on energy production and use is extremely critical given energy's immense influence on our country and the world. But the issue generally tends to get pushed under the rug in favor of more current subjects. We would like nothing more than for its importance to be paid attention to. And for that reason, energy is the definite issue we most want the 2016 presidential candidates to address.